Hi guys, good morning, welcome to church, nice to be with you today. I just want to kick off by saying a massive thank you and well done to all of you guys who are helping us get um, church moving, helping us do church, whether you're in front of the camera or behind the camera. On the stage, we've got some of you guys leading worship with us, which is awesome. We've got um, some folks on the computers and on the cameras doing things like that, which is very important these days that we need that to be working and need that to be going well in doing such a fantastic job so every time i come here on a sunday morning just to see what's going on and to get some bits and pieces done um i come downstairs and i see you on the stage and i see it um down the side and doing the cameras and all sorts it's fantastic so thank you you're doing great you're doing awesome and we absolutely love it everybody loves the fact that we've got youth running church so if you aren't doing something and you want to be doing something put a comment on this video get in touch with me and we'll find you a job i don't know what it'll be and you might think oh well i'd like to do something but it might not be very good we all got to start somewhere we all got to put our effort in we've got to try as hard as we can jesus loves it when we give everything we've got to him we don't have to be the best we don't have to have the flashiest show. We don't have to be the best musicians that's ever existed. He wants us to give what we've got. He wants us to try our hardest. And you know, yeah, as we do that, we'll get better and, as, and then we'll learn. But he wants us to be together, to spend time with him, to spend time with each other and be doing what we enjoy and what he enjoys us to be doing. So it doesn't matter about being the best or being super special or whatever. If you want to get involved and help us with stuff, maybe it's not on a Sunday, maybe it is when we can go back to normal and you want to do other stuff, just we would love to have you, so get in touch with us. That would be super cool. Um, I hope you're doing all right. If there's anything we can pray for you or anything you want to talk about, do reach out and speak to us. Um, we know that schools are starting to go back and you're all having to do tests and things like that, which sounds a little bit rank, um, but you'll be fine. You'll get there. It's worth it. Um, but if things come up that you're worried about or stressing you out or you just want to speak to someone, um, just get in touch. We'd love to spend some time and just chat about what's going on in life and make sure you still connect with us on Zoom. We're still on Zoom for, for now in the week. I'm sure that will change at some point. Um, hopefully not too far away. But we're still there. The door is always open. The, zoo, the waiting room is always open. You can come and join us whenever you want. Connect. Just listen if you want. If you just want some different people to see, come and be with us. And then hopefully it's not too long until we can be back here together, whether that's on a Sunday, during the week, whatever. Watch this space. Who knows what's going to happen in the next four, five, six, seven weeks um, and into the spring and summertime. Things are going to be looking good. So today, get your Bibles. I want us to have a look at a short, a very short parable um, in the New Testament, a story with a meaning that Jesus tells to his friends, his followers, and the people around him. And this one is called the parable of the lost coin. Um, and this is a story of being lost and found. Now, have you ever been lost? Some of us probably have been lost. I never get lost. I've never been lost in my entire life because I am too proud and too big-headed to uh, to admit that I've got lost. And all you got to do is ask Jess, if we go out walking in the forest or we go out to new places or whatever, I will never get lost. There might be times when I don't know where I'm going and I don't know where I am, but I'm never lost. So lost is a matter of what you think you are, kind of. You can genuinely be lost, like on a desert island, I count that as lost. But I've been in situations and I refuse to exist, that I'm, uh, refuse to accept that I've got lost because it just doesn't happen because I know my way. I've always got a map. I always, you always know where the sun is. You never get lost. Some of you might be like that. Some of you might be like, I get lost in school all the time. Actually, come to think of it, I probably did get lost at school a little bit or at college especially because that was massive building, a little bit scary. But anyway, being lost is a bit scary, a bit crazy. But if you don't know you're lost then you're not lost, do you get me? So if you are in a place and you, you think you know where you are, then you're not lost, but you could actually be lost without knowing you're lost. Anyway, Jesus, Luke 15, chapter, chapter 15, verses eight to 10, tells a story, the parable of the lost coin. I'm gonna read it and a few points to pull out um, that we can learn about relationship with God, about relationship with Jesus, and about how much he cares for us from just these one, two, three verses we're going to try our best. So Luke 15, verse 8, 9 and 10. Follow along or just listen. I'm going to read it. And Jesus says this. Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house and, care and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls all her friends and neighbours together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost coin. 
In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Really short parable. Really um, simple, straight to the point. A woman loses a coin, finds a coin, has a party. Boom, there we go. That's what Jesus is saying. But there are three things I think we can learn from this parable. Um, So I'm going to start with thing number one that I think we can learn from this parable is Jesus wants to meet with us all. If you look who Jesus is speaking to when he reads this parable, you have to go to verse one. It says, now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering round to hear Jesus, verse two. But the Pharisees and teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus is sat around with his friends, with his followers. He sat around with tax collectors and sinners or people who don't meet the standard of these Pharisees, these religious people who think they know it all. They've got all the rules. They do everything right, apparently, but they have no love and care for other people. So they are casting judgment on Jesus, saying, don't listen to this guy. He sits and he meets with people who are awful. They they, they they cheat, they lie, they're dirty, they're, they're poor, they're uneducated. And these are the kind of things they're thinking. He's meeting with the people that don't need to be accepted, the outcasts on the outside of society. But what does Jesus do? He just sits around with them. He eats with them. He accepts them. And that's really simple. And I think we talk about this quite often, but it's really powerful and really important to remember for ourselves, but also as we think about sharing Jesus with our friends, with the people around us is that Jesus meets with us all. None of these people have to be qualified to sit at the table and eat dinner with Jesus. None of these people have to pass any tests, jump through any hoops, have to look in a certain way or act in a certain way before they can meet with Jesus. Jesus says, come, let's sit down, let's get to know each other. And you can see this in the parable as well. Because the woman, so so basically, if you've not caught it, the people are the coins so this, so this woman has 10 coins, she loses one. This is about people who get lost, who fall away from God, who don't know God. And that God is the woman in this story who sweeps the house and does everything to find the one coin. And God has everything to find the one person and then celebrates when she's found it. And God loves it when he finds people and they come back to him. But we say the first thing to remember is Jesus meets with us all. Jesus accepts us all. God wants relationship with us all. Whether that's for the first time, whether you've had relationship or have relationship with God, or you know God and know Jesus, but you feel distant from him because of things you have done or haven't done. He wants to meet with us all. Thing number two I think we can learn from this parable is that you have a future This woman has 10 silver coins and loses one, then she finds it. You might think, well, you got 10 coins, you lose one, big deal. You've still got nine. You can survive on nine coins. And yeah, actually, there are things in life we could probably lose and survive without. I don't know, some of us could probably cope with losing a little bit of money. Some of us could probably cope with losing um, some of our clothes. Some of us could probably cope with losing uh, a PlayStation controller because we have 10. I don't know. There might be things in life that we accept that it's okay to lose. But this woman doesn't accept that this coin is, she doesn't accept that she can lose it. She doesn't think, you know what, I've got nine of us, that will do. It's very valuable. And actually in her situation, it would have been, this would have not just been money she has like for for buying chips and stuff. (laughs) This is money that is for her future. This money guarantees her safety, her security, like her pension, like you get when you work and you save up money so that when you retire, when you're older, you've got money and you don't have to work. This would have been really important money for her to keep her going into the future. So she doesn't accept the fact that she's lost it. She knows it's somewhere. And God doesn't accept the fact that we we are away from him. God doesn't like it. God doesn't accept it and think, you know what? I've got these people here. You over there, I can do without you. That's never what God says. So if you feel like, you know what? I don't think God has a value. It doesn't have a use for me. I don't think I have a future with God because he's got everybody else. Look, he's got those talented people. He's got these cool people. He's got those nice people. He doesn't need me. That's a lie. That's rubbish because You have a future. This coin in this woman's life has a purpose for the future. And you, whether you believe in God, whether you have a relationship with Jesus or whether you don't, you have a future with Jesus. You have a future in the kingdom of God. You are valuable and you have a purpose, just like this coin has a purpose. And what happens when she finds it? There's a massive party. And when God finds people who know they're lost or don't know they're lost, 
It doesn't kind of matter. God finds them and he celebrates because I, he knows I have a reason to have this person. I have a reason and it's that for everybody. So if you feel like, I mean, this, the, the, these last months and years, this year has been difficult, hasn't it? And it can feel like you may be just existing rather than living an exciting life. God has a purpose for you. You have a future and you might have to wait until you see what happens. You might have to wait to find out what God's plan for your life is. It might be a day by day thing. You get him and say, God, what is the plan? Do I really have a future of you? But he does. He doesn't ever give up. He searches. And actually, if you read this chapter, there's a, quite a few parables that say the same thing. You have a future and a purpose. God wants relationship with you. So remember that, guys. You have a future with Jesus. And the third thing, the third thing I want to say from this parable is every life is worth it. We know that Jesus is sat around with tax collectors, with people who don't meet the standard. We know that he is searching and doing everything and spending his time and energy trying to find people and save them. And he's reaching out to folks because they have a purpose. But we know that every life is worth it. Now, it doesn't matter what this coin looks like. It doesn't matter if it's broken. It doesn't matter if it's in the corner covered in muck. It doesn't matter if it's fallen in a cooking pot and it's covered in food. Like, do you, do you get what I mean? Every life is worth it. So it doesn't matter with Jesus. Like the people he wants to meet with, the people he wants to sit around and eat with and get to know. It doesn't matter where they've come from or what they've done. And in our lives, we can sometimes think, well, actually Christians get put across this view that you have to meet a certain standard before you can be accepted. And actually, human acceptance might depend on that sometimes because humans never get everything right. So actually, the humans that you're around, people at school, friends, family, whatever, they might set expectations for you before they accept you. But that's wrong because we shouldn't do that. That's not the example that Jesus sets. He says, every life is worth it. Every life is worth me searching for and me spending time with. But the fact is, we don't have to do anything to be accepted by God. All we've got to do is say, all right, I'd like to come and get to know you a little bit more. Then that's when the party starts. That's when things start changing, when we accept Jesus into our lives. So every life is worth it because we've got these Pharisees and these teachers and religious people saying, why do you sit and eat with these people? They're not worth it. And Jesus says they are worth it. Every life is worth it. So that's just three simple, I think, but maybe complicated things from that parable. Um, so I'm going to leave you with three questions, things to think about after that. Um, think about the people you know. You might not have seen them for a while because of life. You know, we, kn we know what it's like. But three things to, for you to think about. Who do you think or who do you know who God is working in their life? Who in your life is God, where, is God meeting? Where is God using you to meet with people? Where is God working and who is God working in? You might think, no one, that's all right. You might think, oh, I think God is really doing something with this person. Second question, who would you like God to be working with? Who would you like God to be meeting with? Who would you like to be sat down on that table with Jesus? Someone that you know. Who is that person? And then third question is, what part can you play in that? What part can you play in Jesus meeting with that person, in Jesus finding that lost coin? Because we don't have to be Jesus. We don't have to be sat at the table saying all of this stuff. We can actually be his friends and followers who are sat around with everybody else. And we lead people. We say, have you met Jesus? Come, come, come and find out. We don't have to be Jesus. We just have to sometimes point the way. So who is God working in? Where would you, who would you like God to be working in? And what part can you play? Those are maybe three questions to ask him. Sit down and ask God, what's going on here? Pray, say, God, would you start working in this person? Would you start working in my friend that sits next to me in maths? Would you start working in my, um, my family member or my next door neighbor? Would you start working in this person I know? Would you come and meet them, invite them to come and sit down with you? Because that's when the real crazy stuff, the great stuff in our life starts to happen. Because not everybody knows that they have a future and not everybody knows that their life is worth it. And it's our responsibility to say, do you know what? It is, you should come and meet Jesus. So guys, thank you for watching this morning. If you've got any questions or comments, put them down below. If you want to chat, um, go for that. If you want to come and be with us during the week and you haven't been for a while, just drop us a message and we'll send you the Zoom links and stuff like that for Wednesday and Thursday. And hopefully you will enjoy going back to school. We're praying that you'll be safe 
and um, have good times connecting with your teachers and friends again. And hopefully we will see you soon. Have a great rest of your day and we'll catch up soon. Bye.